Good evening everybody, welcome back to Star Cub Review. I'm your host Star Cub and tonight's review is going to be um, finally, it's going to be my final review for a PS5 game called The Chant um, from 2022, from last year. Now, if you remember, I did a semi review for it for the first three chapters of this game. Um, I will bring it up on the screen, um, but I did like a little semi review for it, which went for a couple of minutes, but this game is amazing. And after finishing it last night, all the way through, finished it, I can honestly say the chant is cosmic horror done right. But before we get into that, uh, for anyone new and returning, thank you so much, um, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Everyone new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, glad you clicked on this review to watch it. And for everyone returning, you know I love you all. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I finished the chant last night and I can honestly say, hands down, it's definitely Cosmic Horror done right. Um, now it was, uh, it's an, it's a, uh, it's a horror action adventure game developed by Brass Token and published by Prime Matter. And I, let me tell you, they have done a fantastic job. They are uh, right down to a T. They did Cosmic Horror well. They got the sense of dread, fear, the unknowing, um, losing your mind um, to the madness, uh, what's around the corner, what, you know, jump scares around the corner, what scares you, what gives you the greatest amount of fear, what do you fear most, you know, when your friends suddenly turn on you and there's all these different horrors. Um, psychedelic horrors as well. This game basically is a love letter to 70s psychedelic horror is the best way to put it. It pays uh, homage to a lot of the 70s psychedelic horror, f horror films of that era, but also giving an identity on its own. Uh, it definitely has influences of HP Lovecraft within it, but it's a con separate thing, completely different from HP Lovecraft's Bethos. This one is entirely new and fresh on its own, but you can definitely see the influences that they have from HP Lovecraft into the game. But basically, let's get into it. Basically, the story is basically you play as Jessica, She's invited to a weekend retreat on an island by her friend Kim. And when she gets there, they participate in a ritual with a whole bunch of other people who she meets and they're integral to the story. Um, they do a ritual, they do a ritual that night and suddenly everything turns into horror, terror. Uh, everything goes horribly wrong and they open a dimension or dimensional rift portal and they let in what is known as the gloom, which is these interdimensional uh, cosmic horror entities that sap you of your, um, of your mind. They drive you mad. They can attack your mind. They can drive, they drive people insane. They can kill you. Um, they do everything possible to terrify the character while also um, Jessica also has to find out now with the friends that she's, all the new friends that she's met and her friend Kim, they have to now navigate the island and find out its terrible secrets, why the gloom is here, what, how do they stop it? But also along the way in the story, there's all these interconnecting plots that you'll discover that, you know, Jessica's not a saint. Her friend Kim is not a saint. They all have a certain, certain dark secrets that they've never revealed. And suddenly it all starts coming out and it's all, 
psychedelic in your face survival horror but also action oriented as well but those elements together to the story basically is done very very well and while you're navigating the island it's all interconnected there's all different areas around the island that are interconnected to the story that play into it but you soon learn the horrors of um that there's been experiments that have happened here before um, the story also tells you backstory of Jessica, Kim. While not seeing a lot of flashbacks, you get more of a sense when they're talking to each other and she's talking to all the friends that she meets on this island. You get a sense of their backstory, what they're about, you know, some of their deepest, darkest secrets. But basically, the story is Jessica goes to the island, they participate in a ritual. She participates in a ritual with her friend Kim and some of the other people that she meets on the island and they unleash this gloom and basically now it's a race against time to stop it before it completely consumes them all and drives them insane it's a an amazing story from start to finish it's divided uh so i'll now go into the gameplay aspect of it it like i said it's an action survival horror game so you do have an assortment of weapons, which can be essential oils, salt, uh, fire lash, witch sticks, sage sticks. Um, you've also got a, it's a spirit, mind and body meter. Um, and it's all done in like this prism circle. And there's all different traits within this to develop your character. So you can you uh, level up with uh, prismic crystals. So you need a certain amount. So there's a lot of item management in this as well, especially you can craft in this as well with the item management that's in this game. You scour the island looking for items to craft for weapons, essential oils, um, fire bombs. And of course you've got resources to also um, level up your mind, body, and spirit. So you want more health, you have to level up your uh, your body. Um, mind, you have uh, you have to level up your mind. So when creatures attack you, you're not prone to. You've got more defenses when they try to attack your mind directly. And spirit is basically you've also got these abilities. Um, as you go in, the, as you go further and further in the game, you get all these abilities prismic abilities that allow you to do certain magical and spiritual attacks. So, you know, you'll need spiritual mushroom caps to level up that. But you've also got defense. You've also got uh, prismic powers that level up the meter for your prismic power. You've also got where you can um, hold more um, ginger for health, um, more uh, sage sticks, more fire lashes more essential oils. So it all plays into item management. Um, and the higher your difficulty level, you go up in difficulty level, the less you have to really, really, really scour for items. And you really have to manage your items um, right down to a T. Like you can escape enemies. You don't have to necessarily fight them. You can save all your magical abilities and your weapon use for just the bosses themselves. And let me tell you, the bosses themselves are quite challenging, um, which was really, really good. The creatures themselves are challenging as well. It depends what difficulty level you really choose to go with, but it's challenging either way. The puzzles are intriguing um, in the interconnected space, in the interconnected island. So the puzzles are very engaging, make you think, but they're not overly like, oh, you're going to pull your hair out. So they are actually quite engaging as well. Six chapters. Um, this game contains six chapters, um, but the chapters are fairly long. So I, I, I completed the game in uh, uh, just over eight hours. All up, all round up to, together, it's eight hours of gameplay. Um, but I did a lot of crafting. There's also, you get three endings with the chant as well. I happen to get just one of the endings, but the endings are tied to mind, spirit, and body. So if you have more spirit at the end of the game, you will get the spirit ending. If you've got more body, which is health, 
you'll get the body ending and and for mind body and mind body and soul and uh and if you've got the soul ending if you get more soul then you'll get the soul ending mind body and spirit mind body and spirit not soul sorry spirit <laughs> scrap that sorry um let me just take a, a drink of my coffee it all plays into item management you really have to think you need certain health for this boss you need certain health for this boss or you need certain weapons you can craft the weapons with certain plants that you get and certain items as well your mind body and mind body and spirit meter the prism where all the abilities are it, you really have to f uh, really really think what is needed for each section of the game especially going into the different chapters as well it is essential it, it is really really good it's not overly um it doesn't really you know you have to throw this out and you have to throw that out it'll tell you straight away when you go to go pick up an item it'll say inventory full because you've got it all full but you've also got within that upgraded um prism ability section you can upgrade your capacity for lavender capacity for ginger capacity for sage all of that sort of stuff you've got you can level up as well but you have to collect the prismatic crystals and it'll say on there times one times three and then times five so you, to get all three um in that one section upgraded section you need five so if you save them all up and then do it like that you can get certain ones all done all in a row it's all about item management um finding the enemies as well you know you've got to find their weaknesses whether they're weakness to a witch stick or a sage stick or a fire lash you know when you're fighting inside the gloom it's preferable to go with a sage stick over a fire lash you've got essential oils you've got salts as well which you can throw at the enemy and it burns them it stops them in their tracks and you've got a few seconds to hit them with whatever item you're crafting or you're using it's all about item management it's all about the puzzles it's about the story and also there's an added thing with the exploration as well it's all interconnected you can go into all different spots but you need to find certain keys to get into this store and you need to find certain items that uh, you have to fuse together to open this particular door and stuff like that it's very very well thought out it's amazing how well they really really planned all this out but also with the exploration part of it you get more backstory of the other people that have come to this retreat on this island many many years ago especially in the 70s you'll get all different sort of documents and uh pieces of paper and stories from other people that have been on the island that have sadly died or gone through some weird ass experiment or there's some backstory with Anton Monroe who's an important founder of this particular retreat uh, he's very vital you'll see more of him in, with the reels that you get throughout your playthrough you'll get these reels and then you'll play them on a real uh, movie machine thing um, in the game. I won't spoil too much there, but you'll get more backstory of Anton Monroe there and why he's so pivotal to this whole story. It starts, you'll get, when you first start the game, it'll start in the 70s and then it'll go to the present. But the 70s is linked with the present, but you'll find out more about other inhabitants that have come to the retreat um, as you collect these papers and so that and you'll find out the tragic stories of some of the other people and certain links to Anton Munro and um, links to uh, Jessica why she's a, why she's a pivotal character why you know there's there's all these interconnecting things she's there's more to Jessica than meets the eye. She's connected to this whole thing as well, which you'll find out in, as you play the game. But other than that, that's the story. That's the gameplay. 
The visuals are amazing. Um, I will say it gives you the real creepy vibe. The visuals are amazing. Cinema photography is amazing. Soundtrack is like this synth 70s... Um, it's re it, it's, it has this real 70s horror synth vibe to it. It's an amazing soundtrack. Um, yeah, so please go and check it out because the soundtrack alone, the synth 70s sort of horror aesthetic soundtrack is amazing. Um, I would have loved to have seen more exploration from some of the other characters in the game, especially the relationship that she has with her best friend, that Jessica has with her best friend, Kim. I wish that had been explored a little bit more, but other than that, it's perfectly the way that it is. It's perfectly done. The, um, like I said, this game is, um, is amazing. It's cosmic horror done right, but it doesn't overly rely on a whole bunch of HP Lovecraft mythos thrown in. It's it's really a thing all on its own, but you can see where the HP Lovecraft influence is there, but it's not really HP Lovecraft per se. They've done a really good job of making that clear that it's got nothing to do with HP Lovecraft's mythos. It's all the gloom creatures, are all completely new and fresh, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, gameplay is amazing. Visuals are amazing. Soundtrack is amazing. The story is amazing. Hands down, guys, you really need to check this out. Um, now, for my rating, um, I will definitely give this game a 9 out of 10 for a, being a huge fan of cosmic horror and survival horror. Uh, the chant does a really, really good job. It draws you in from start to finish. And if you wanted to have that replay value, you've got that replay value to do the other two endings, to get the other two endings if that satisfies you. But, and then you've got the challenge, you've got more challenging for the trophy aspect and the speedrunners, of course. Um, there's more challenging trophies in it that will be up, rock, up people's alleys. But I definitely give this a 9 out of 10. And basically, as Anton, uh, as Anton Monroe says, from gloom to glory, um, it's basically an amazing game and it does a very good job of uh, drawing you in to the story. It's written very well and uh, yeah, there's some, there's some good, real good intense scenes. Some of it will really hit home, but it also... It could also play out as a movie as well, which is essentially what this uh, thing has done. The game has done, essentially, um, it could feel like a movie, but it's a video game. <laughs> Other than that, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, this is my review done for my final review down done. And this is also one of my games that I had in my backlog that is now completed. Yay! Um, so I'm happy about that. Now on to the next one, on to Resident Evil 4, so I can do a final review for that. Um, but other than that, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll catch you all in the next one. All right, bye.